Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I'm going to show you how you can make a, I guess, taiko drum style sound. Now, a few weeks ago, I made the, like, impact sounds, and I actually figured something out while I was doing it, and I want to show you that today. How you can make something like a taiko drum, or you can also use this for, like, a frame drum or lots of different other types of drums, but uh, those bigger sounds and uh, how to make it more dynamic. So let's get into it. I'll show you the basic sound, like this is what I have now. So as you can hear there, it changes as I hit it harder. So I'll show you how to do that. But uh, let's set it up with something blank here. For the default, put our limiter on as always. Uh, I'm just going to change the general envelope here. Probably want to move the release up fairly high, like this, make sure it's on percussive mode. Uh, I want the polyphonic one note here. And what we're going to start out with is what we always do for any kind of physical modeling stuff. Use the drum synthesizer 4N. For this, we can use anything, but I just want the noise here. I'll make it a little bit long. You can change this depending on the sound you want. It's like 500, 600 something. Make sure our band passes are off. Should sound like this. Should have an envelope there. That's perfect. Now, sometimes I like to use a high pass because I don't want things that are really low. Just maybe here. That seems okay to me. But you can kind of move that up if you want. But I want some of the lows, but I don't need 20 hertz lows for my white noise. Now that I have that, that seems good. I can also use an oscillator with a sign drop if I want, but I think this is kind of enough for now. The next thing I want to use is I'll just use Filter Basic. What I want to use this for is I want to create a quick filter drop, so it'll create like a slapping sound, and that's going to be our exciter. Now I could just use just the envelope, but I don't think it sounds as good. It doesn't give you that hard hit sound. And if you use the oscillator to do a quick sign falling, this is a little bit too sharp. For me, the white noise into a filter drop is you know right where it needs to be, in my opinion. But for this, we're going to use the pitch mode and change it to constant, because we don't want it being key tracked. So we have it here, about 440 hertz. That's okay. We need a low pass filter. And then we're going to use the attack module here. So we can move it up. It doesn't need to be super high. Maybe about here, maybe 15,000 hertz. Let's see what that sounds like. Oh, and also make sure you change the actual attack. Just bend it down a little bit. Uh, maybe 400, 500. That actually may not be good. I might need to make it faster, but also I need to take down this resonance quite a bit. I don't want that pew pew. I don't need laser sounds for this. That could be okay. I'm, I'll try it a little bit longer and a little bit shorter. That's too short. Maybe here. And we can always go back and change this later, depending on the sound we want. Next thing we need, as always, we're going to use our modal filter. I love this module. I'm going to go in here. I'm going to use my preset, as always, the all harmonics, just to turn all these on. I actually don't need all these. I'm going to cut these down by half, but I'll show you that later. We're going to turn our resonance down. It needs to be pretty far down. And turn our output down, because I don't want this getting too loud. Now, the most important part is here in the structure area. We don't need the other ones, we're just going to use A, but you could if you wanted to, if you want to morph between things. What we're going to do is we're going to analyze a sample, or you could use something if you already have a preset here, which I do, but I'll show you how to analyze a sample. Just find a drum that you like, uh, probably a Tyco drum, but you could use something else if you wanted to, like a frame drum. We're going to load the file, I have the threshold here, you can kind of play with that if you want. Uh, I don't know. I've moved it up here. When you're analyzing drums, a lot of the time what you're going to get is just noises from white noise and other things, and you don't want that if it's really low in volume. So I kind of move it up so I can get the most important harmonics, the real ones, I guess. And I'm going to put it on expect in harmonic this way and sort by frequency, just because it's a little bit easier for me. Now we're going to load file, find whatever file you have. Here's our Tycho drum here. Analyze it. Now... You're going to have to go through and find the 
actual slice, it sounds good. So as you see here in the sample, they actually changed this recently, the sonogram, it looks good. But anyways, when you move this, you see our partials, our harmonics are moving. So you need to find one that sounds good. I think here at the very beginning, it actually won't. It's going to be a little bit too chimey, I think, in my opinion. Oh, also, I should mention, change this to constant. We might want to move it down a bit. But let's try it. I have it on, you know, that first very beginning. Let's hear what it sounds like. That's not sounding too good to me. I can move the resonance down a bit more. Not great. I'm gonna move it down someplace in the middle here. Try it where here. Yeah, it's a little bit far. I don't know. I like it when this first harmonic is all the way at the top, but that really isn't necessary. Uh, let's try this. We can try this. Make sure it's loud enough. Well, actually, leave it down for now, actually. Now that I mentioned that. We're going to change the resonance. And listen to how the change in resonance really affects the sound. So you can see that by changing the resonance, you get more slap on it. We're going to adjust that later. But for now, let's reduce the count. The count in the number of harmonics and partials here, number one, it creates a lots of high end, which we don't really need, but two, it uses a lots of CPU and just creates more clutter. So let's reduce that. I think around 16 sounds good, but go through this yourself and listen to it. Let me move it up here. I think 16 is enough. Let's go back in here and analyze the sample, see if we can find something a little bit better. This is sounding pretty good to me. Of course, there's other samples you can use. Go through a few until you find exactly what you like. But this is sounding good, and we can try changing the octaves. That's sounding good. What we're going to do now is, one, get rid of the velocity because we're going to do something else with it. So we don't want it changing in volume, you know, depending on how hard we press it. What we do want is we want to change the resonance based upon how hard we press it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the resonance up to the, I guess, maximum amount where it sounds good and like a drum. So if I move it all the way up here, that sounds like metal. That's not, that's not a drum. Maybe about 25, I guess. What am I doing? 25. Here we go. What we're going to do now is add some velocity control. Change this to velocity. And we're just going to move this down. So the harder we hit it, the more this resonance is going to go down. And I don't want it to go to zero, but I want it pretty close, actually. Let's say 5%. So if I hit it light, it sounds like this. Hard. So now, as I go from harder to lighter, you can hear the tonal difference. And we can also do some other things too, if you think, ah, oh, you know, that's kind of too bright in places. We can also add uh, another layer here and use velocity here. So it will, instead of, I guess, in this case, it's multiplying it. I should probably go in reverse. Uh, this one, yeah, reverse here. So it's decreasing it based upon that. So now it won't go as high depending on how maybe hard or light I hit it. I'm sorry. I did do it in reverse. Uh, oh, no. Do it this way. Go in here and do this. Actually... I'm confusing myself. 
I think it's actually correct like this. So the harder I hit it, the more the velocity is going to control it and open it up. And the lighter I hit it, the less it's going to open up. So, yeah. Never mind all that. I was getting, confusing myself. Sorry. And I may not want that much uh, velocity affecting it. Just a little bit. So add that in and find whatever sounds good to you. And by the same token, I'll show you another one. So if you don't like this sound, we can go in here. I have a few other ones too. Let's try this large Tycho. See what this sounds like. And I probably want to adjust the release a little bit. As always, we can add, you know, change the tone by changing the semitones. Another thing you might want to try is move it in octave. Sometimes you find like, oh, this actually sounds good up an octave or down an octave. That to me doesn't sound bad up there. I think it sounds better down here. But up. Doesn't sound bad. I could definitely use that for something. So mess around with the semitones and octaves there. Another thing we can do is you might want to add punch, but kind of be careful with this trick. I think I showed you this before. We're going to go into attack. We're going to use the same thing. Bend this down, however you like, and move this to around between like 30 and about 15 or so. I have this, and what we're going to do next is we're going to take this depth and just move it up. If you go too high, it's going to sound like a laser zap, like this. but just a little bit, maybe around like uh, 12 semitones or so. And the same thing, sometimes if you move this up, it doesn't sound as good, like here. You can kind of go Pew! like that, which you really don't want. So you might want to, if you're making a device, you might want to control this amount so that way they can choose how much is actually added. And another thing we can do is set this using our velocity again. So that way, when I hit it softly, you're not hearing that zap. You hear that, you can hear it, I can exaggerate it. You hear that? You don't want that. But if we use a velocity, that way when we're hitting it soft, you don't hear it, but then when you hit it hard, you really hear that slap. I think that's a cool thing. I, I like lots of slap on my drums. The last thing I'll show, and I know people ask me about this, is how do you get like some human variation? So when you hit a drum in different places, it's going to excite the harmonics slightly differently, meaning that they're going to be in different volumes. What we can do to simulate that is just go in here and for each of these partials, add some randomness to it each time it's hit. So I'll kind of exaggerate it here. And to be honest, if you're making a device, you probably want a multi-parameter to control how much randomness is happening. We're going to use true random. You could use the note random, but the problem with this is if we do this for each of these different partials, they're all going to move the same way, which isn't good. We want each partial to have a different random amount each time. So we're going to choose true random here. And let's go here and let's say the volume, you can make it whatever you want. Let's say five, six decibels. And we'll do it up and down. So now it can go up and down here. Once we have that, we're just gonna copy it and then we're gonna paste it to each one. And luckily because it's true random, you don't have to worry about like, oh, will they all be different? They'll all move slightly differently each time. So unfortunately it's a little bit tedious to do. But once you do it, you have it. To be honest, actually, now that I think about it, I should probably make just a preset where I have this already done for me. 
but I don't, so I'm having to do it myself here. And each time we hit it, it's going to sound a little bit different, so that way you won't get like machine gunning or any of those types of things. So it won't be like a sample, it'll be actually extremely different each time. There's a few other ways you could do this too, by using, let's say, a, a filter, like a peak filter that moved, uh, and probably use that instead of after the modal filter, before the modal, modal filter, that changed in frequency, so it's emphasizing a different area each time, but I think this sounds a little bit better. So here we go, I'll try to hit it softly and see if I can get it slightly, it'll sound different each time, and watch the partials here change. I'll try to hit it hard too. Hopefully you can hear that. I have the keyboard in my ear, so it's a little bit hard for me to hear. But hopefully that gives you an idea of what you can do. And you can adjust it more. I'm going up and down six decibels, but if you wanted more, you go like 12 decibels or whatever. Or if you think, you know, that's way too much, let's do it down like three or two decibels. And all that will work. Uh, other things I might want to do, just to make this more powerful, we can put a saturator on there. This, an output down. Like that. Let's move this down. And finally, of course, we want reverb. Uh, let's see. We use a room here, large drum room. Turn this down, maybe here. And get a final product that sounds just about like this. Oh, I don't want that. Put it on inverse. Actually, don't do that. Like this. Sorry, probably got a little bit too loud, but hopefully you get the idea. Hopefully I didn't clip too much. That's why you'll have to make sure you have the limiter on at all times. You don't want to make a mistake and blow out your ears. So hopefully this gave you some ideas of what you can do with this. I used a, a Tycho drum here, but you could use something else. I think I have a frame drum in here, so I could do something similar with that. And make sure you listen to each one, because sometimes you think like, oh, I adjust the resonance here, it's going to max 5, maybe this for the frame drum, maybe max like 12 or so. And by doing this, you can simulate all sorts of drums, or even new drums that have never, you know, occurred before. You could, you know, change the structure yourself to make something that fits you and uh, your own unique ideas. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave me any questions or comments down below, and check out all the other plugins at MelterProduction.com. Till next time, see you.